After Russ Meyer's four gothic pictures, which everyone loved, he moved into melodrama. And it is here where we separate the casual Russ fan from the Russ aficionado. Everyone loves Faster Pussycat Kill Kill, for good reason. Very few people love Good Morning and Goodbye, and that's really a shame, because there are mountains of reasons to love this film. <laughs> Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob, and today I'm taking a look at the last Russ Meyer film written by arguably the best writer he ever worked with, Jack Moran. The guy that wrote Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. Yeah, he's awesome. The story this time centers around Bert, played by Meyer regular Stuart Lancaster, and he and his wife Angel, played by Elena Capri, are having marital problems. You see, Bert no longer has any, um, lead in his pencil, and Angel is desperate to get some writing done. Is that euphemistic enough for YouTube? I don't know, we'll find out. And Elena Capri, man, she might be the most beautiful woman to ever appear in a Russ Meyer film, and brother, that's saying a lot. So here, like in many Meyer films, failure to keep the woman satisfied is what disrupts the natural ordering of the world. Since Bert can't perform, Angel steps out with the hunky stone. Stone is not a one-woman kind of guy, and he's not married at all, so he's more than free to um, lay his granite all over town. And this does cause some drama on occasion. Bert's daughter, Lena, wants to give Ray her V-card, but Ray has heard about Angel's exploits around the town and would like to find a way on her list of Bert surrogates. And all of this drives Lena into the arms of Stone. <laughs> Man, this is like a soap opera. And all of this could be fixed if just Bert could find a way to fix himself. Ah, well, Haji is here, and she plays a forest witch, and uh, she might be able to help with that problem. So, yeah, as you can see, this movie is pure Meyer. Let's talk some highlights. The dialogue. Wow. In my review of Faster Pussycat Kill Kill, I said that the star there was not the women, but the writing, and that is certainly true here as well to it spread it all out ready and waiting and suddenly you got no appetite well i don't enjoy a picnic the cockroaches have beaten me to sadly this is the last script that jack moran did for russ that's really too bad but if you like tura satana in faster pussycat you'll probably like elena capri here in good morning and goodbye where tura was bombastic elena is acerbic you're the worst in town Thank God I know somebody in the country. <laughs> oh man, she is the prettiest of pretty hate machines. So, as you can probably see, none of the conversations here are realistic. People don't talk this way, which is kind of unfortunate, actually. And normally, uh, this would be a sign of bad writing. Good writing should be invisible. It shouldn't sound like writing. Uh, that's not the case here, but it still works because it has such a cool style. Movies like this are style over realism, they're quips over plot, they're fun over good taste. And I just love it. You can listen to this movie like you're listening to a podcast. You don't even need the images on the screen to have a good time. The images on the screen will help you have a much better time. I'm not trying to say they won't, but still. And of course, none of this great dialogue would work without good line delivery, and yeah, we get plenty of that here. In fact, just in general, I find the performances that Russ got out of his actors kind of impressive. I mean, uh, these are amateurs. Uh, some of them have no experience at all or very little experience, and he manages consistently to get good performances out of them. I mean, this is really apparent if you watch some of the other movies that some of the actors in Russ films show up in. Uh, yeah, you can see that Russ really knew what he was doing. In fact, this movie has what might be my favorite performance from Stuart Lancaster. And Elena Capri, she is wow. She only did two films, uh, both with Russ, and then she retired from showbiz to be a school teacher. This film here was her last role. In fact, she was rather embarrassed by the work she did with Russ, and she very much was afraid people would find out about it. Russ helped keep her identity secret, and when he died, she came to his funeral. Anyway, uh, back to the movie. I'm not a car guy, but the cars here look really good. Jack Moran must have been a car guy. I mean, cars play a pretty big role in Faster Pussycat as well. Uh, and here, the characters even refer to each other in car language. Do you want to cut in or do you just need a tighter girdle? I never use one. Then stay off the shoulders. This isn't a freeway. I'm sorry. I didn't see your taillights. Finally, like... 
every Rush Buyer movie, it looks great. The guy really did know his way around a camera. More importantly, he knew how to use that camera to make his actors look their best. But I wouldn't say the movie is perfect. Like the boys who were lucky enough to have Alina Capri as a school teacher, this film has some shortcomings. Okay, well, elephant in the room here, Elena Capri was not comfortable with on-screen nudity, so if you're hoping for that, you're gonna be disappointed. I mean, we get some flashes and some quick peeks at side boob, but, you know, she wasn't ooshy. I mean, who is, really? Uh, so we're not gonna get to see everything from every possible angle. If that's what you're hoping for, sorry to disappoint you. You know, and just in general, I know this movie isn't for everyone. It's a weird movie. I mean, the dialogue is weird. It's great, but it's weird. Uh, the characters are kind of weird. They're beautiful, but they're weird. This is a weird movie. It's a Russ Meyer movie. It's more of a vibe than a satisfying cinematic experience, but man, what a vibe. Mm -hmm.